The Chicago White Sox had quite the weekend. They split the four-game series with the Cleveland Guardians. The last two games were obviously much more enjoyable than the first two. Many highs and lows during the series, uh, much like the 2022 season. The White Sox ended the weekend on a high note, but it was how they did it that really excited fans. Home runs, blown opportunities, anemic offense, and amazing pitching. It was a full weekend. You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked on White Sox. Thank you for making Locked on White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked on Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Just search Locked on White Sox. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale. Uh, Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, Recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox. Locked on White Sox is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Dylan Cease picked up right where he left off, but how did the Sox fare against Shane Bieber? Uh, When the ball goes far, the Sox tend to win. I'm going to tell you why that recipe checks out. And it didn't start off well, but it ended on a high note. Uh, The Chicago White Sox are 48 and 48, uh, four games back in the AL Central. Uh, Monday episodes are always interesting. Uh, So much to get to uh, from the weekend and what a weekend it was. You know, I really talked myself into the fact that with the Sox heading into the break, going seven and three, uh, which included, of course, uh, winning three of four in Minnesota, I really convinced myself that the Sox turned a corner. Uh, Then being without White Sox baseball for several days, uh, I let my mind wander and I was positive that the Sox were going to come out of the gates storming Uh, And, you know, I created the narrative and I had to ride the roller coaster. Uh, Sox split the four game series with the Cleveland Guardians and went 10 and nine uh, during that critical 19 game divisional stretch. Uh, They started the series this past weekend at 500 and ended it at 500. Uh, Game one out of the gates, uh, one of the most disappointing games, uh, just about uh, as disappointing as anything that the Sox have done so far uh, this year. In my opinion, uh, we've got to start with Friday. Unfortunately, Uh, Cleveland beat the Sox eight to two. Uh, Giolito was on the hill in his previous 10 starts against Cleveland. He had a point eight three ERA. Uh, Friday's start, that game one of the series, not so good. He went three innings pitched, gave up nine hits, six earned runs, uh, walked zero, which is good, only had two strikeouts, and gave up a home run. Um, only threw 64 pitches, uh, a just an absolutely rough outing to come out of the all-star break, uh, pitching like that. Um, man, Cleveland is pesky, though, uh, uh, Rosario Jimenez, uh, they had their way with the Sox. Uh, it's that's how it happened on Friday and it happened throughout the weekend. They run hard, they take extra bases, they hustle, they outplay you. Uh, it was an Apple TV Plus broadcast, so maybe you didn't have an opportunity uh, to watch the game, you were maybe glued in on the radio or, or caught your uh, highlights and updates. 
in other spots. I, I felt it was like it was a rough uh, telecast, uh, Apple TV Plus. It was Hunter Pence, uh, Stephen Nelson, and Katie Nolan in the booth. And it just seemed like they were three folks that kind of stumbled upon a game at a party that they were at. And they decided to make comments on the game while they were at the party with little inside jokes and making each other laugh. Uh, I, I didn't really care for it. I, I like the visuals of the Apple TV telecast, crisp, uh, great picture, uh, but I still haven't found a broadcast team that I, I really enjoy. Uh, there was some news before that Friday game. Uh, Yasmani Grandal and Aloy uh, Jimenez uh, they came back. Uh, Robert, Luis Robert put on the 10 day IL. Uh, they're saying uh, cautiously optimistic. He returns on Friday against Oakland. Uh, but Luis Robert has not done any baseball activity since leaving game one of the Minnesota series uh, before the break. According to Han, nobody knows what's going on in regards to the continued lightheadedness and blurred vision. And I, you know, I know I am not the only one that is absolutely concerned uh, with what's going on with Luis Robert. Um, you know, I, I can't even begin to speculate, uh, you know, rumors of, you know, vertigo, uh, some sort of inner ear infection. Did he did he somehow suffer a concussion? Uh, the fact that nobody knows and, and maybe they are and they're just not tipping their hand and they're just keeping quiet. Uh, who who really knows at this point? There, there was some video of Robert doing some baseball activities, running the bases and such uh, this weekend. Uh, so we will, you know, we will be listening and waiting and hoping for some good news that he does indeed uh, return uh, when he's able to uh, against Oakland on Friday. Uh, Rick Hahn uh, also spoke uh, regarding the trade deadline uh, you know, it's that time of year. Uh, I don't know if you felt this like, like you know, as I did. Um, it's that time of year when Rick Hahn gets in front, you know, of a microphone to tell you that the Sox are kicking the tires on every available player to help improve the ball club. Uh, but like every other offseason and trade deadline in recent memory, the targets are second base, right field. Uh, maybe, and of course, you know, a lefty power bat and the bullpen. Like, you know, who else is looking for the bullpen? Everybody. Uh, two issues, second base right field, that should have already been solved. Uh, and one of them that the Sox spent a lion's share of their offensive spending trying to improve. Uh, so here we go. It's like kind of meet the new year, same as the old year. Again, the Sox have a lot of holes. They, they, there are a lot of issues that need to be cleaned up. And I wonder sometimes if, you know, if this current cast of characters, let's assume Aloy Jimenez and Grandal stay healthy, and and we hope, hope, hope that Luis Robert will be back uh, on Friday. If this, if this group could play up their potential, play some clean baseball, not give outs to the opposition run the bases well, back up bases, just classic fundamentals. If they could do that, there might not be a great need to add a bunch of guys at the deadline. Uh, again, we're, we're getting close. We are getting very close to that August 2nd uh, deadline. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, it was a split double header on Saturday, and both games had some similarities, uh, but two different outcomes. Uh, I'm going to tell you how Lance Lynn uh, answered back. Uh, more on that in a moment. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Uh, whether you're custom customizing an engagement ring or designing diamond uh, stud earrings, online jeweler blue nile will allow you to create a bigger more brilliant piece than you can imagine at a price you won't find at a traditional jeweler uh, blue nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape size and clarity as well as setting style the blue nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring each ring is one of a kind Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. 
Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. So you had two games on Saturday, and they were very uh, different, although there were some similarities. Uh, game one of the doubleheader on Saturday, Sox lost 7-4, to four, and this was a roller coaster of a game. Uh, basically, the 2022 season in one game. You had lifeless, anemic uh, offense for a majority of the game. Uh, team, just the body language, everything didn't look like they wanted to be there. Flashed some excitement, then imploded, all without hitting a home run. Uh, Sox came back in the seventh inning from being down four to one. Liam Hendricks gave up three runs and four hits in the eighth. Sox lost. Uh, Tim Anderson did not play in game one. Uh, and this was much talked about. Uh, a lot of different almost theories that were discussed or reasons. Um, for the sense that I got from what I read, uh, Tony LaRusse's desire to give Tim Anderson rest because of the All-Star break. Uh, okay, so this uh, uh, Tony LaRusse had a long explanation. This is according to James Fegan uh, from The Athletic. Uh, LaRusse talked about traveling for the all-star game playing in it and its surrounding events can be taxing uh, i've been through it too many times with all-stars said la russa uh, la russa said he wanted to give anderson a full day off but is just giving him game one uh, off instead and uh, he was true to that there were opportunities in the game uh, that we could have used a pinch hit and Anderson did not see the field at all in game one. Lots of aggravation from fans on social media about that, especially when you saw uh, Jose Ramirez for Cleveland Guardians ended up playing in both games, and he also participated in all-star game activities. I, I tell you, with, with these division games, I mean, almost it's almost like every game matters right now, but especially the division games. And uh, Anderson sat in game one. Uh, Cleveland continued to do the little things. I mean, they just out hustle you. Uh, they outplay you and they get the most out of their abilities. They're not a better team on paper than the Chicago White Sox, but they have bought into the sense of, you know, these are the things we can do and we're just going to do these so well. Uh, we can't make any mistakes. We're going to run the bases really well. We're going to take extra bases on you. We're going to force you to make mistakes. Uh, they see a lot of pitches. You know, it's not like they hit with high velocity either. Um, you know, their exit velocity isn't triple digits. It's it's not even high 90s, you know, but, but it gets the job done. They put the ball in play. Uh, and what they did against uh, Hendricks, you know, that was, that was really, he was paper cut to death uh, in a way. Um, Quan, man, th this guy for Cleveland, if you've watched the series and you've watched any Cleveland Sox games this year, uh, Quan, he is, he's getting into that list of, of, of opponents that, you know, Sox fans just do not want to see. He, he really put on a clinic uh, in game one and, and, you know, Gavin Sheets is playing out in right field and, and he's pushed out there because, uh, this organization wants to see his left-handed bat because he can run into a pitch every now and then, and, and he could hit it over the fence. And of course, when the ball goes far, the 10 the team tends to go far. We we've seen it, uh, especially in this weekend uh, on Sunday. I mean, when they hit three home runs, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but she, Gavin Sheets is not a right fielder, but he's forced to play right field. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't take good angles on balls hit out there. He doesn't have an arm, and it's not accurate. And every team out there knows it. Uh, and Cleveland and everybody else will take every extra base possible, you know, on his weak, inaccurate arm. Um, Johnny Cueto, uh, he pitched in game one. He deserved so much better. Uh, Cueto had a really good game. He pitched seven innings, gave up eight hits, 
uh, four runs, three of them were earned, uh, only one walk, zero strikeouts, which was interesting. Uh, his ERA sits now at 2.89. Uh, he absolutely deserved better. It was Johnny Cueto's 10th quality start in 12 starts this season for the White Sox. That is unbelievable, especially since he didn't start the year uh, with the Sox. Graveman and Hendricks pitched after Cueto, and of course Hendricks completely imploded uh, and gave up those three big runs uh, in the ninth inning. Uh, Saturday's game, uh, two was a completely different story. Thank goodness. Even though it was a tight one, Sox won five to four, uh, in dramatic fashion, kind of, uh, a lot was made during the all-star break, talked about it on this podcast. Uh, and I know it was talked to amongst a lot of a collection of Sox fans, uh, what's going on with Lance Lynn, especially after his last outing in Minnesota, got to get him rolling need Need the 2021 Lance Lynn if possible, uh, as soon as possible. And Lance Lynn delivered in game two on Saturday. He went six innings, gave up three hits, zero earned runs, only one walk and six strikeouts. Uh, he's got his ERA at 6.43. He only threw 87 pitches, and that was talked about quite a bit by a lot of fans. Uh, why, why take him out? You know, like why... We got an off day, he, you know, he's, he's, he's gonna, he just had, he just had a bunch of rest. Um, Tony La Russa and, uh, and the staff decided to take Lance Lynn out. Jose Ruiz was put in. He gave up three earned runs. Uh, Joe Kelly gave up nothing in his appearance and AJ Pollock had to play hero with a big two run hit. Uh, in the eighth after the Sox gave up the lead and allowed Cleveland to get four runs. Uh, it was a huge opportunity for A.J. Uh, Pollock. He had a really nice couple of games there, game two and, of course, on Sunday. And then Matt Foster comes in to nail things down uh, in the ninth for the Sox to get that win. Mankata had two RBIs. Pollock, of course, uh, two for four with two RBIs. Aloy Jimenez, hello, with a solo home run. And uh, Sox were two for seven with runners in scoring position on that game, too. It was also the Yasmani Grandal bobblehead uh, game. Maybe you got yourself the Yaz bobblehead. Uh, Dylan Sees pitched like the all-star. We all know he should have been. And I'm going to tell you how the Sox exercised some demons uh, offensively speaking, of course, more on that in a moment. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite moments and events uh, at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Uh, find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Uh, Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, big game on Sunday. Uh, you needed to get the you needed to get the win. You had to split. Uh, go into that off day with with just some better feelings. Um, who knew, I didn't even think the game was going to get in the way the weather uh, held up. It was a thick, humid day uh, on Sunday. Dylan Cease against Shane Bieber. What a matchup! Sox, of course, won six to two. Uh, did not expect Sunday to go the way it went. Uh, was looking forward to the Cease Bieber matchup, and I believed Cease uh, he was going to be able to hold his own. But after the last time the Sox saw Bieber, I definitely had my doubts uh, about if they would make the adjustments. Uh, Bieber was on the hill. What did he do the last time against the White Sox? July 23rd, it was game one of a doubleheader, and he went nine innings. Three hits, one earned run, zero walks, and seven strikeouts. So that is what's burned in your memory as a Sox player. What kind of adjustments could be made? It was a completely different story 
on Sunday. Now, Andrew Vaughn did not play. And the specifics on why Andrew Vaughn did not play, uh, this is according to Tony LaRusso. In Andrew's case, he's been playing out in the outfield. I talked to him this morning, uh, meaning Sunday, and talked to the White Sox trainer, James Cruck, and thought it would be a good break. We were careful with his legs there for a while, and he started to feel himself. So it's a good day to, to back off. Sometimes you need freshness of mind, and sometimes you need freshness of body. Uh, the case here, it's freshness of body. The guy's not going out there when he's all tight and hurt, and he plays and pulls something, tears something. What's the point? He had four days off and three rugged days here. He ran a lot. Believe me, if there wasn't a good, re good reason, Andrew's as good a hitter as we have in our lineup, he'd be in the lineup. There's a good reason. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, whether you not, you believe what uh, LaRusa had said. Uh, Andrew Vaughn, or just a reminder, he's 24 years old. Uh, and there are off days coming up on Monday and Thursday. Uh, Sunday was a critical game. Again, all games are, but this one especially was. And we needed all hands on deck against right-handed pitcher Shane Bieber. Uh, maybe, you know, Andrew Vaughn and his problems with hitting righties, maybe that factored into it. Maybe that was the real reason. Uh, who knows? But uh, Andrew Vaughn did not play in Sunday's game. And thank goodness there are other folks that stepped up. Sox offense got home runs from Lurie Garcia. He had a two-run shot. A.J. Pollock, three-run home run. And Aloy Jimenez, another solo shot, all off of Bieber. Unbelievable. Sox final offensive line, six runs, eight hits, a walk, five strikeouts. They were one for three with runners in scoring position. Uh, this was definitely a ball go far, team go far situation. Uh, pitching for the Sox, hey, it was all Dylan Cease. In his last 10 starts, uh, Dylan Cease had a .47 ERA. Opponents hit 166 off of him. And Cease was magnificent uh, on Sunday. He picked up right where he left off. Six innings, seven hits, zero earned runs. Uh, only one walk, four strikeouts, which is kind of low for his, a Dylan C start. Uh, his ERA down to 2.03, uh, and he threw 97 pitches on Sunday. Uh, Lambert and Graveman came in, and then Hendricks back in the saddle in the ninth. He gives up a solo home run to Quan, of course. Uh, Rosario with a base hit. Things definitely got a little interesting, especially when you remember, of course, what happened with Hendricks the day before. But all's well that ends well as Hendricks nailed it down. You have got to have a short memory uh, as a closer. So Sox split with Cleveland. They are back to 500, 48 and 48. Got an off day on Monday. And then that uh, quick two-game series uh, with the Rockies in Colorado. Uh, thanks so much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sacks podcast absolutely everywhere uh, you find your podcasts. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Socks. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore uh, GGTB. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sacks your first listen today. Now make your second listen the Locked On MLB podcast. Uh, MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, coming up on the next episode, it's time to give Hall of Famer Mini Minoso his due, and I'll get you ready for the series with the Colorado Rockies. Hey, appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski, and until next time, go Sox!